is Lady. She's my friend's walking horse cross. She's 11 years old. She's fairly new to this whole dressage thing. She's a wonderful trail horse. So today we're applying some French classical dressage methods of training. We're using the fence as a means to keep her from going forward. What we're trying to do is get her relaxed in the jaw and the pull. We're trying to get her to um, be soft with the mouth, to open and close her mouth, to get her salivating and, and her tongue activated. So if she's opening and closing her mouth, that's just fine. We don't want her to be locked up in the jaw. That's what she tends to do. So we want her to be soft and relaxed there. And from there, then we can start asking her to engage more from behind and stepping under. I'm also working on the timing of my inside leg to her inside hind leg. It's important that the timing is there. This horse is really good about listening to my legs, so I rarely have to use my whip. Um, and if I do, it's, it's a very, very light touch. But uh, in any case, it's very, very important that I become aware of when this hind leg is stepping under the body. Because as it's in motion, that's when I need to take my calf to the girth. Because at that moment, that's when I can best affect a deeper step under the body. And so I'm becoming better aware of that. So in any case, um, the first thing is just to maintain that she's soft here in the jaw. If she's locked up at all with her head like this, or she's resisting in any way, or getting like a goiter neck, then I need to stop what I'm doing back here and refocus here on relaxation. Because if she's not relaxed here, then she's not relaxed in her mind and she's not trainable. So I have to have a trainable mind before I can have any training going on back here. Otherwise, I'm just gonna have a tense and resistant body. So we're just doing a few exercises along the fence as a warm up just getting her to step under her body, um, and then also keeping her straight by the use of my inside leg and the timing of her inside hind leg to the outside indirect rein that is against her neck with a light contact. That keeps her body straight and keeps her from kind of uh, leading with her shoulder. Because you don't want that. You don't want that jackknife semi feeling of them going by the leading of their shoulder. You want them fairly straight as they go at a 45 degree angle along the fence. I'm not doing a side pass, which would be perpendicular to the fence. I'm doing a leg yield along the fence, which is a 45 degree angle along the fence. And I'm not trying to be fast, and I'm not trying to get overstride. I'm just trying to get her to be listening to my aids, getting my timing right with her inside hind leg, and getting us to just the um, connecting my aids with her steps and my inside leg to the outside indirect rein. And I notice that there's one direction that she's easier than the other. So that's very normal. And um, the experts always say, make sure you practice the harder side twice as much as the easy side so that you create an ambidextrous course. So we'll do a couple more exercises here. I don't want to drill her. I just want her to have a little bit of a break, do a couple more exercises, and then move on to something else. So the first thing is just to engage the bars, the corners of her mouth, by lifting my hands and just uh, asking gently for her to come to me. I don't want her pulling on me. And when she gives, then I relax. I don't want her pulling on me. But when she gives, then we can move on to the next thing, which would be going along the fence. I'll be using my, my left hand with the whip right here where my leg would be if she ignores my leg. So first I want to get her soft. I don't want her pulling on me though. So we gotta get her soft in the jaw. There, that's a little better. Don't want her leaning though. There. Don't lean though. Don't lean. There. That's pretty good. Come on. Gotta go forward. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna go along the fence.
Well, that was a hot mess. We had a couple good steps at the very end. <laughs> I had a lot of starts and stops because she was getting resistant. And there's no point in me continuing the sideways if she's resistant in the pole. So I had to stop, regroup in the pole, get her soft and relaxed in her mind and in her body in the pole, and then ask again to go forward. A lot of times she got confused and thought rain back. So I just said, no, 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 I didn't mean that. I meant forward. So this whole idea of, of contact and roundness and forwardness is new to her. She's the kind of horse that likes to be on the trail where she just has her head and she goes. So this is new to her. So we're we're going to do this one more time. And then we're going to move to something else because she gets very frustrated if I do any one thing too much. Some of the things she does is she'll, uh, she goes nice for a couple steps and then she'll lean on the bit and race. So um, that's when I stop and I, I try, to, try to correct it before she does that. When she starts leaning, I try to get her from leaning by lifting my hands and going alternating squeeze, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, release to get her from leaning. And if that doesn't work, then she just takes the bit and she kind of plunges and then rushes off. So uh, then I have to stop and regroup. So. so. And if she really gets heavy on the forehand, I just close both hands and just wait until she backs off. I never pull at her but she pulls on me. So I just close my hands until she stops pulling and then I release when she gives. was much better. Much, much better. So we will put this exercise on that note. She did that a hundred times better than the first try. So that was very, very nice. Very, very good. Thanks for watching. Come visit us at naturallygated.com.